Welcome to Rich Conversations. Today, I want to talk about something that's fascinated me over the last two years, and that's the Global Cities Index. I first came across this. I used to uh, do these scheduled Wikipedia rabbit hole sessions where on my phone, I would set 45 minutes and just go on Wikipedia and just go down all these rabbit holes and then see what I, what I find, right? And what I learn about and the Global Cities Index and city regional GDP. Oh, it was so interesting to me. So why don't we talk about it today? So the Global Cities Index is basically this ranking of all the world's cities based on, I think like 27 different uh, categories and criteria, uh, kind of along the lines of business activity, human capital, information exchange, cultural experience, political engagement. You know, so all of these different cities are, they set kind of like the global agenda, right? And you know, you have uh, weather, transnational dangers, they serve as hubs of global integration. On this podcast and uh, during these videos, you've seen me in the past talk about cities because it's something I'm just so fascinated by, right? Um, we've read Scale by Jeffrey West and that's basically how like cities are kind of like biological organisms, right? Where you gotta think about the whole to, to serve the whole, right? Uh, and there's all these different individual parts and they all add up, right? So scale, we have triumph of the city. And this is about how our greatest invention, cities, make us richer, smarter, greener, healthier, and happier uh, by Edward Glazer. So we read this one and then uh, another great one, the death and life of great American cities by Jane Jacobs. Chicago is basically the hub of these Midwest values of kindness and work ethic and through the activity that happens in Chicago and where I live, you know, it, it sends our culture out to the world and people can understand who we are as a people, right? So I find it very important to learn more about uh, different cities and, and learn from them so we can apply them here. I'm just so fascinated by cities, right? Because these are the places that people come to interact with each other, to learn about each other and to live harmoniously and to put ideas out into the world. Cities are great. So let's take a look at some of these rankings, right? It's organized in this weird way. So you have alpha plus plus cities, alpha plus cities, alpha cities, alpha minus cities, beta plus cities, beta cities. So let's, let's, let's start at the top, right? There are two alpha plus plus cities. And again, this is based on uh, human capital, information exchange, institutions, entertainment, arts, like all these different things, right? Uh, just like the power of like where, where things happen in the world, right? Can you guess the top two? What do you think about it? They're pretty obvious. New York and London, okay? Then we have, we have seven alpha plus cities. And uh, can you guess those? Give you some time to think about it. All right, so we have Beijing, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Dubai, Paris, Singapore, and Tokyo. Okay, so those are the alpha plus cities. Here's the thing about the Global Cities Index is that there's all these like uh, consultant firms, right? And they all have their own different lists, but generally you kind of get the same cities in there. So this is the 2020 Global Cities Index and a ranking of cities in the world. Oh, isn't this so much fun, right? You learn about geography and history and culture and people through like, oh, these are the biggest hubs in the world. And it can surprise you oftentimes like, oh, I didn't know Seoul was, was quite up there. They actually dropped from the last time I saw this. I'm on Wikipedia right now, so we're just kind of going through that. 2020 Global Cities Index, top 10 cities in the world. New York City, London, Paris, Tokyo, Beijing, Hong Kong, Los Angeles, Chicago, Singapore, and Washington, DC. So again, all these different 
there's all these different like firms that that do the same type of criteria but this is now an average of all those indexes okay so we have new york london tokyo hong kong paris singapore los angeles shanghai beijing seoul chicago chicago comes in at 11. san francisco is now 12. wow san francisco has really jumped um when you see on here, they're ranked in innovation, like number one, but they're so off balance with all these other categories. And some of the criteria that they have on here is like uh, economic activity, political power, knowledge and influence, uh, quality of life. Um, it takes personal well-being into account, which I think is a really important thing to consider, right? Here's a more specific breakdown of some of the categories. Variety of international financial services, notably uh, finance, insurance, real estate, banking, accountancy, marketing, headquarters of several multinational corporations, the existence of financial headquarters like a stock exchange or major financial institutions, domination of the trade and economy of a large surrounding area, major manufacturing centers with port and container facilities, uh, considerable decision-making power on a daily basis and at a global level, centers of new ideas and innovation in business, economics, culture, and politics, centers of media and communications for global networks, dominance of the national region with great international significance, high percentage of residents employed in the services sector and information sector, uh, high quality education and institutions renowned Universities, international student attendance and research facilities, multifunctional infrastructure offering some of the best legal, medical, and entertainment facilities in the country. High diversity in language, culture, religion, and ideologies. So that's even a more specific breakdown of some of the categories that they, they judge this on. Uh, something that's kind of interesting is Miami is on here. And I'm hearing more and more about Miami and we're actually taking a trip to Miami in a couple of weeks, uh, which should be exciting. I look at Miami as just like, I'm so curious about uh, the culture and, and the art and just the whole vibe of it. I think it has like a really international feel. It kind of feels like, like the capital of the Caribbean in a way. And I think that's so fascinating that we have all these different regional cultures in the United States. Um, and yet we're still like one country. And I think that's, so unique compared to basically like every country in the world. And I think as Americans, we don't consider that enough. It's very fascinating. So by looking at a list like this, uh, even glancing through it for, you know, five minutes, you can kind of see where a lot of decisions are made, where uh, a lot of culture, our culture, our global culture comes from. So if you get a chance, look up the Global Cities Index and you might surprise yourself with uh, how much you learn about economics, geography, and uh, uh, culture.